On episode 332 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Stephanie Gray and discuss her book, Your Longevity Blueprint. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 332. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Our guest today has more credentials than I think I've ever seen from any of the guests I've had on this show. She went to medical school in Iowa and had her master's from the University of South Florida. Uh, She has a clinic in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, focusing on integrative medicine and hormone replacement. With no further ado, here's Dr. Stephanie Gray. So Dr. Gray, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Your book is The Longevity Blueprint, and I really enjoyed the read. A lot of great information and put in a way that I think is very understandable for quite a few people. But the book, in my opinion, is not actually about so much longevity. It is sort of like, how, how do we maximize our health and wellness so that we actually enjoy living longer? Well said. Yeah, I would agree. I was really trying to create some nine actionable steps for the audience or for readers (laughs) to optimize their health because unfortunately, many individuals don't even know functional medicine exists. You know, they don't know testing options exist to help them optimize whether it's their nutritional status or help them detoxify their body or increase their hormone levels. And so I was hoping this book would really introduce the audience to functional medicine. Yes. And, you know, I think most of us, we go to a doctor when we're sick, we're not feeling well. And the doctor says, okay, well, what are your symptoms? And you, you tell them fatigue, just uh, brain fog, several other things that are kind of going on in your life, not sleeping well, uh, you know, maybe some migraines. And uh, the doctor says, well, here's some Prozac. Um, or whatever, whatever the, the diagnosis, you know, it's a symptom diagnosis. It's like there's a chart back in the back of their office, or maybe they've memorized it. If they're thinking you have this, this is, this is how you fix it with, with some form of medicine. But the reality is medicine isn't really designed to fix us. It's designed to fix a symptom. I would totally agree. You know, we need conventional medicine, especially, unfortunately, if you get in an accident, right? We have great emergency care here in the United States. And we, I like to use in my book, at least I referenced Dr. Patrick Flynn's analogy that conventional medicine is more of the fire department approach. So if you have a fire, (laughs) conventional medicine can help you put out that fire, but really only using two tools, drugs and surgery. And so unfortunately, (laughs) when you have a symptom like fatigue, that isn't really an emergency, Conventional medicine doesn't necessarily help you get to the root cause of the problem. Like you mentioned, a lot of times they'll just recommend, oh, well, take an antidepressant or take a stimulant medication. When that's really not getting to the root cause, it's not really explaining the why to the fatigue. And that's what makes functional medicine different. We do explore the why. We try to, you know, explore if the patient has low thyroid or, you know, low sex hormone status, or maybe their nutrition is terrible, but we want to get to the root cause of the problem and not just give the patient that band-aid approach to their health care. It's very interesting to me, you know, um, Hippocrates, Hippocrates, I'm probably saying that wrong, but, you know, Hippocrates, yeah. Hippocrates. okay, he said it, he said it a long, long time ago, let f- food by the, be thy medicine. And yet mm-hmm. our entire, most of our, now it's changing. It, it feels like it's changing more and more understanding that the, the food, which we put in our, our mouths in volumes can do a lot more for our health than the one little pill or, or 12 little pills that we're taking over the course of a day. And I think a lot of that's just because when we're, we're, we're fueling our body and we're building our body with better stuff, we're, we're just, we end up being better. But a lot of folks uh, don't actually recognize that they have nutritional deficiencies. And, uh, you know, a lot of my clients will come to me and say, Hey, Alan, uh, should I be supplementing with something, you know, like, uh, should I be taking an iron supplement or should I be taking, uh, you know, vitamin B or C or, or, or whatever the, the cool thing is today. And my, my short answer is I have no clue because I don't have your blood test to see if there's any deficiencies. I don't really know the quality of your food to know if you're getting most of the vitamins you need. 
I don't know if you're getting outside to get enough sun exposure to right. have the vitamin D that you need. Can you talk a bit about uh, the nutritional deficiencies and some of the symptoms we might be seeing, uh, some of the things we can do, what to look for with supplements? Because you said it in the book, one a day um, actually isn't one a day. Uh, you would need to take four of them just to get what your basic body bodily needs are. But even then, I'm not sure we actually get all of that from that one a day, just based on total quality and everything else. So I know that's a lot to throw out there, but could you just kind of uh, tell us a bit about nutritional deficiencies and, and how we can recognize them and what we can do? Sure. If you don't mind, I'm, I might go off on a little tangent here. So I think first we should clarify why we are so nutritionally deficient because a lot of my patients say, well, you know, why did my grandma never have to supplement, but I do. And I, sadly our world has really changed. So, you know, the nutritional value that used to be in an apple growing in your you know, grandma's backyard, unfortunately, as much was better as compared to much higher in nutritional content as compared to an apple today. Our apples might be three times the size, but they're not packing that nutritional punch that apples used to. Our, unfortunately, our food sources are just not as nutritionally dense. Our, we have very deficient soil. And you know, even the USDA agriculture figures will show the decline in over 40 crops that they've been tracking for years. And so we know that the food that's growing in this deficient soil is now deficient. You know, soil should be rich in antioxidants and vitamins and minerals producing foods in the same. And that's unfortunately just not always the case. I even have patients who are growing their own food in their <laughs> in their backyard and it's organic and you know the foods still again don't pack that nutritional punch so that's not our fault but unfortunately that's working against us you know the processing of foods also depletes nutrients half the time the foods we're eating has been harvested or picked you know days weeks even months before we're eating it and so as you can imagine, over time, the nutrient content in those foods is, is declining. And then sometimes we even cook with really high heat, high temperature, and that's blasting our foods, destroying some of the nutritional value. And so we're kind of unfortunately set up to be nutritionally deficient. And then when we add things like maybe some lifestyle choices, if we choose to consume alcohol or caffeine or smoke, those are all going to use up or deplete our body of nutrients. And if we take medications, many patients of my patients are shocked to know that the medications they're taking are depleting them of nutrients. Um, many individuals are aware that drugs like statin medications for cholesterol can deplete CoQ10. And CoQ10 is a very important antioxidant in the body that can help us with energy. <laughs> and many patients who are taking the statin medication end up with myalgias or muscle pains because their body's been robbed of that CoQ10. And that's just one example. All sort of medications, even things like birth control, that one patient might feel is just a you know basic medication, actually does deplete B vitamins and even magnesium. And so we're very quickly, I just wanted to <laughs> go over yeah. some of the reasons why we unfortunately are so low on nutrients. And then you add maybe exercise or if you have a very stressful life. And again, what's happening, <laughs> your body's using up those nutrients. And so unfortunately, we now in our world today need to supplement more than ever before, more than our grandma, right? Decades ago. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's part of why we need the nutrients. But I, in my book, Your Longevity Blueprint, I try to describe nutrients as working in our body kind of like putting a key in a keyhole, right? The nutrients are going to unlock certain processes in the body. I tell patients to think of nutrients as what you need literally to produce energy in that Krebs cycle. If you remember that from high school science class, <laughs> and you need nutrients to make hormones, hormones that make you feel good. So, you know, you just don't want to be set up to be nutritionally deficient. This, the list of symptoms I could go on and on, but fatigue is obviously one symptom. If we think we could go nutrient by nutrient and kind of discuss yeah, symptoms yeah. that can exist. Yeah, I think for the, for the core ones, you know, so yeah, vitamin D, C, B, you know, the, the core ones, maybe some of the minerals, I, I think, yeah, this would be quite valuable because I, you know, I, I do believe that, you know, people will know, okay, if they don't have enough iron, they may feel a little anemic and their you know, energy will be low. And, you know, sometimes the doctor will pick that up in a blood test and say, oh, you're low in your iron. Uh, so that's a fairly common uh, tests that a, a standard doctor would do, but it's not often that a doctor will do uh, a full blood panel to look at uh, how deficient you might be in these various vitamins. So I think us having just some basic recognition of, of 
when we might be deficient in a vitamin. So we know we at least need to start doing the diagnostic work. Sure. So B vitamin deficiencies are very common. B vitamins are what help our adrenals. They help us adapt to stress. They help us produce energy. So a lot of times patients, I mean, one of the first supplements I'll have a patient, especially an athlete start if they're really tired, is just a B complex to see if that's helping. Some patients can even have symptoms in the nervous system. So if they're getting tingling, uh, burning symptoms, whatnot, a lot of times they will need the B vitamins as well. Uh, vitamin D deficiency can also lead to fatigue. And actually I live in Iowa. And so many of my patients are very low in vitamin D just because we don't have the sun year round. And so patients who are low in vitamin D are going to be more likely to get sick, get the flu through, you know, that flu season. So that's one of the first nutrients we try to optimize in our patients come fall time so they can get their level high to protect them through the winter. I've had even patients young in their 20s and 30s, you know, have fractures. And that's not normal <laughs> to have fractures when you're young. And so one of the first things we're then looking at in those patients, if they end up with osteopenia or osteoporosis is their vitamin D status. And sometimes it's shockingly, even young patients are very low in vitamin D. Vitamin D helps greatly with bone density. So not just in the young populations, but also in the older populations, we want to make sure we're increasing vitamin D. Vitamin D greatly helps with mood. So if we think of, you know, seasonal affective disorder through the winter, that makes sense. Patients get more depressed when there's no sunlight. They're not getting their vitamin D through the winter. So mm -hmm. those are kind of some of the symptoms of low vitamin D. And then you mentioned vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is great for immune support also. So that's typically also a nutrient that I'm going to recommend through the winter just to help support the patient for not getting sick. <laughs> yeah. Many patients will bruise very easily. And so one of the first nutrients we'll recommend for them is also vitamin C. Vitamin C helps strengthen the capillaries so that they're, so that they don't bruise as easily. Okay. And then do you want me to keep going yeah, or do you yeah, want to? Yeah. I mean, a couple of the minerals I think would be valuable too, because there, there, there's some of them that, you know, are, are quite important. And if we're not uh, monitoring those, um, there's going to be some, some risk there. So magnesium is probably the most important mineral, in my opinion. It's uh, important for, I think, over 300 different enzymatic pathways in the body. Uh, I actually wrote, just recently wrote a blog on uh, magnesium and all the different types, you know, picking the best type of magnesium and whatnot. But I use magnesium in my patients because it's a very calming, relaxing hormone. So if they're having any symptoms of overstimulation, meaning anxiety, if they can't sleep, if their legs feel... You know, kind of creepy crawly if they're having restless leg um, symptoms or um, cramping in the legs, we'll give them magnesium to calm down the cramps or calm down the mind or calm down the heart. So magnesium can be extremely beneficial even to calm the gut. If patients have constipation, magnesium can help relax the bowels to facilitate daily bowel movements in the morning. Magnesium also helps produce your hormones. So you don't want to be low in magnesium if you have low hormones, which we all do. Hormones decline as we age. So supplementing with magnesium can help prevent some of that loss. Okay. Now, I was, I was really happy in the book that um, when you got into the discussion of hormones, that you, you didn't go just one way or the other, because I've seen so many books where they just say, okay, let's focus on the sex hormones because that's what people care about. And then other people say, well, I'm dealing with people that have th thyroid issues. So they're looking for a book on thyroid issues. So there, there's the thyroid issues. And it's not very common that someone will say, okay, let's just look at this whole thing together. Because they're, they're, to me, they're the one-two punch of vitality and uh, just feeling and, and, and being the best you you can be. Uh, if, you're, if your sex hormones are not optimized, uh, you don't feel as good as you could. And if obviously, if you don't have the thyroid uh, hormones working, uh, you're not going to have the energy level that you need to have uh, to do the things you want to do. So to me, they're, they're both just as important. I understand when someone has an issue on one side or the other, they're going to be more focused on that. But if we're coming at this, looking at it from a how to stay as healthy as we can versus how do I cure illness, I want to look at both. And I'm glad that you did. Could you take a little bit of time to talk about hormones? How do we actually go about optimizing our hormones so that we can be the best be we, can, we can be. Sure. I think the first step is to just really know your body and know, okay, what symptoms am I experiencing? Have I had hair loss? Have I had brain fog? Am I more cold? Have I had weight gain or more fatigue? Those are all low thyroid symptoms. And so, you know, if you're thinking, gosh, I may have some low, low hormone symptoms, 
find a provider who can help you order a comprehensive hormone panel to get your levels checked to see where you're at. And I would love it if my patients <laughs> would have had levels checked in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, so we could track subtle changes, any subtle decline that's happening You know, each decade or half decade, whatnot. Because sometimes patients' levels are really low end, and I don't know if that's their baseline. I don't know if that's where they've been for years or if their levels are barely in the reference range. Is this a dramatic decline? You know, years ago, were they very high end of normal and now they're low end of normal? So it'd, it'd be really nice to be able to track those levels over the years so patients, again, could detect if their levels are declining. But having comprehensive thyroid hormone levels done is extremely important. So, and I, and I describe this in chapter six of my book. So, TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, which should be checked, but I said in my book, it kind of <laughs> stands for too slow to help because by the time <laughs> TSH is high, many times T4 and T3 are very low. So you only have T3 receptors in your body. T4's whole role in life is to convert to T3. And many doctors never check T3. They only check T4. And if T4 looks good, they assume you know the patient's good to go. And that's not the case. So a big take home is to make sure you have a free T3 checked. That's the gas pedal on your metabolism and your energy. You want your gas on hard. You don't want your, your reverse T3, which is the brake pedal, um, on hard. You want those you know, flipped. And so it's also important to have the reverse T3 checked and then thyroid antibodies. If thyroid antibodies are high, that indicates your body could be attacking itself. That's an, those are some autoimmune markers. The more that your body attacks the thyroid, the more thyroid function is going to decline. And so even if your thyroid function is holding steady, but your antibody levels are high, that's great information to have to know, okay, I need to stay ahead of this <laughs> to prevent my thyroid hormone levels from further declining. So I think I can speak to sex hormones as well, but just from a thyroid standpoint, those are great tests to have your provider run to give you kind of a gauge on where you're sitting today to know if low thyroid is a problem for you currently. Okay. And then on, on the sex hormones, how, how would we, we go about uh, optimizing those? Sure. So again, the first step is to get your levels tested. I think a lot of women think, well, I don't need testosterone, but actually they do. I have women very young who you know, already have zero testosterone due to big stressors in their life or whatnot. So sometimes it's difficult to maybe admit that we lose hormones as we age, but men age 30 to 70 are going to lose one to 5% of their testosterone every year. And women age 20 to 40 lose 50% of their total testosterone production. So it's important to have testosterone levels checked in both men and women, and also estrogen levels checked in both men and women. A lot of guys think they don't have estrogen, but many men convert their testosterone over to estrogen. And that's what men don't want. We need to have lower estrogen, higher testosterone um, in men. So checking those hormones is important. And then in women, also checking progesterone. Progesterone is the most soothing, calming hormone, great for sleep. Many women in their 30s and 40s get put on antidepressants or anxiety medications. And really, the root cause of the problem was low progesterone, but no one ever assessed it. So asking your provider to check estrogens, progesterone, testosterone is a great start. Cool. And then from there, you can kind of decide how you want to address um, some deficiencies or some, some low numbers through the help of your healthcare pr provider. Yes. And, you know, there are natural ways to boost hormones. You know, we could talk about optimizing, again, nutritional status. Also, many times herbs can be very effective for patients who haven't had hysterectomies, you know, who still have all their organs. Using herbs can help to produce hormones. But then in my clinic, we do specialize in natural hormone replacement therapy for both men and women. And there are lots of options um, for those patients. Okay. So one of the things I really do want to recap here is that your standard doctor you know, bless their heart. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they, they are going to go in and try to take care of you when you go in saying you're not feeling well, and you may go in for regular checkups. So they'll do the, the normal stuff. Uh, but the normal blood panel is going to be looking at your cholesterol and maybe they're looking at some organ function, particularly if they know there's some lifestyle things or some things going on, they may check some, some bits and pieces of the data that you might want to have. But in, when you're really looking at this, I, th I think it's, it's worth at least once 
a year, maybe once every two years, if, if you need to push it off, is to really kind of go out and get a kind of a full on just panel. What, what are my potential nutritional deficiencies? Uh, what are my potential hormone issues? And, and, and I say this, even if you don't feel like you have symptoms, because one of the funny things is you, you might think you're normal. You might think this is my normal day. I wake up, I have trouble sleeping. I feel a little groggy in the morning. I do my coffee and I'm good to go for the day. As long as I drink coffee until three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and that's the normal day. And then you say, well, okay, that's normal. But when you get yourself tested and you realize that your testosterone is a little low and perhaps your vitamin D is a little low and you say, okay, and your vitamin B, particularly B12 is low. And I'm like, okay, well, if we actually supplement for these things, now you start to realize what actual normal should feel like because yeah, all, you get back up to stability and you get up to where you're, you're now optimized. And so I, I, sorry to interject there, but I just, I think so many people just go in and say, well, my doctor and the generation before us, I think was, was so much more, uh, my doctor said it. So it's the absolute truth. And I think we have to be uh, engaged as a part of our healthcare and uh, the normal doctor isn't necessarily uh, inclined to want to go that route initially because he has seven minutes with you. He has to figure out what's wrong with you. He has to prescribe medication and then he has to move on to the next patient. But a holistic functional doctor is, is really going to have more opportunity and kind of a, a more holistic view of health. I need to go find that person because my current doctor in my hometown might not be that person. How do I find a contractor? In your book, you say contract because you do the house stuff. But how do I find the right person to treat me for optimal health? Yeah, good question. So that's the topic of really the last chapter in my book is my book is about building a healthier body using functional medicine. So just to clarify to the audience here, <laughs> um, I'm comparing how we maintain our home, right? We're mowing the lawn, we keep hair out of the drain, we make sure we're changing our furnace filters. We do all these things for maintenance for our home, but yet we don't always do or we don't always know even what maintenance is available for our body. And so the last chapter of the book, I discuss finding a contractor who I describe as being a functional medicine provider to help them rebuild and repair their body. You know, we need conventional docs. If you have strep throat, you know, if you have again an emergency, we need them to be available. But unfortunately, they don't have a lot of training in nutrition. So again, they may tell you all your labs are normal, your blood count, your kidney liver function, your cholesterol, as you were referring to, but they really have never looked really deep. They haven't really explored what a functional medicine provider could explore. So in your area, usually, hopefully, you could find either an anti-aging, a regenerative, or a functional medicine provider. And you can search by your zip code on either the A4M, which is the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine's website, or the IFM, Institute for Functional Medicine website, and hopefully find someone, even if they're not real local, a lot of these providers will see patients virtually over the phone, or you can make a day trip to go, <laughs> to go see one. Um, in a lot of the larger states, functional medicine is growing very rapidly. So Florida, California, Texas, you know, it's going to be easy. Their states are going to be easier to find providers than like in the Midwest where I'm from. There probably are only maybe five or six in my state, uh, but they are available. <laughs> you just have to be able to find them and they have the training. Like I have a master's in metabolic nutritional medicine. So, you know, many of my colleagues, they have this training where they're more understanding, they interpret the labs differently, and they have access to uh, functional medicine labs. A lot of like my primary care provider, unfortunately, she can't order a nutritional analysis. It's just not available through our local hospital systems. But I have a contract with the functional medicine lab, so I can run a fancy nutritional analysis on my patients. It's 20 pages of vitamins, minerals, amino acids, antioxidants, we can literally test glutathione levels, which is amazing. And even looking at their omega-3 you know, fatty acid levels in the blood. So the unique thing about these functional medicine providers is that they do have um, some specialized testing that can really optimize your health. You just have to find the provider to work with. Yes. And, and I think that's so critical because we, we can't depend on the current medical system to make us well. We, if we're injured, if we're sick, yes, they... they They've been doing that. They know how to do that. But if you really want to optimize health, you really want to feel well all the time, and you really want to have longevity, 
uh, like you say in your uh, longevity blueprint. But the reality is, if you want to have a wonderful life and, 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 and really enjoy it, these are some valuable tests for you to check out. Even if you're not really having major symptoms, I, I do want to stress, get out there every once in a while and just find out what your numbers are. There's even some, and I'm not going to advertise any of them here, but you can go look online. There are some sites that you can actually do full panels yeah. yourself. You just go yeah. to a, a local lab and uh, they'll draw, you know, so phlebot- local phlebotomists will draw it and they'll send it off to these labs and they'll do a full workup for you uh, and send it to you. And it's written in plain English to help you interpret what you see. Um, and at that point, you can either you know, have a conversation with your primary physician or you can seek out uh, a professional that's going to understand what you're going through and what you want to try to accomplish. So, Dr. Gray, thank you so much for being a part of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. If someone wanted to reach out and get to know more about you, where would you like for me to send them? Yeah, so they can check out yourlongevityblueprint.com forward slash 40. Uh, that is a link to a page on my website where we're offering a 10% off store-wide purchases code. The code is THANKS40. Uh, so you can certainly check me out there. I do have a free PDF to download on three top tips to boost your hormones naturally. I really hear talk about reducing stress, reducing your toxin exposure, and fixing nutritional deficiencies. And you can certainly see my book and our book trailer video right on that website. So yourlongevityblueprint.com forward slash 40. And, and as you said, there's, there's a lot more in the book than we could ever, ever hope to <laughs> cover in a podcast. So uh, do check out the book. There's a lot of valuable information in there for you to kind of understand what's going on in your body and some great actionable items for you to use in, in building your health and fitness. So as I said before, Dr. Gray, thank you for being on the podcast. Well, thank you. And to all the listeners, know there's hope. If you don't feel right, there's an answer. Find a provider who can help you get those answers. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dr. Gray. I certainly did. Uh, Really a lot of good information there. Uh, The book is well worth the purchase. So I would encourage you to go out and get uh, Your Longevity Blueprint. It's a really, really good book. It'll teach you a lot about yourself uh, and help you be a big, big partner, a big, big lead, the driver uh, in your wellness journey. Uh, So the last week, uh, I went to Panama, actually uh, an island set called Bocas del Toro, spent some time with my wife, uh, just kind of unwind, enjoy ourselves, learn a little bit about the the place and the culture. Uh, It it really does interest me and, um, you know, maybe might end up being a place that we spend a lot more time uh, than we had originally thought. Uh, We're looking into that. Um, More on that later. I wanted to also let you know before we go that this is going to be the last week that I'm going to leave open the mailing list, the waiting list for uh, the wellness GPS. So uh, if you want to be a part of the launch team, the team that goes through and does their wellness GPSs uh, with me walking you through step by step, you need to go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash GPS. Uh, if you're not on that list, you're probably not going to hear about this because the list is filling up and there's you know almost enough people on there now. Now that it will fill the 20 slots. Uh, I can only work with 20 people because this is hands-on. I'm working with you daily for the seven-day challenge as we go about putting together our wellness GPS. And so if you're interested, you need to go there today and sign up. 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash GPS. Announce it there when I open it. Uh, It's going to be open until the 20 slots are filled. And so it's probably just going to be people that are on this waiting list that are going to get the opportunity to be a part of this challenge. Uh, It's not an open challenge. It's going to be open only to the individuals that are on this list until I fill the 20 slots and then we're done. So again, 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash GPS. And then finally, I know I've been talking about it for the past few weeks, but um, we're working on getting the final uh, bit of manuscript together for the Wellness Roadmap book uh, that I've been working on. And I've also put out a base site for the book. So you can go to wellnessroadmapbook.com, learn more about the topic matter of the book, learn a little bit about me. uh, And then I am setting up a mailing list that's going to be specific for the book. You won't be getting other mailings from me. This is going to be my launch team. Uh, when you write a book, it's it's really not an individual thing. Uh, yes, I do spend a lot of time alone uh, writing and editing and typing and 
redlining. I'm not the most efficient writer out there. Uh, so it does take me a little while. So there's a lot of alone time. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but launching a book is really a team sport. Um, and I need you on my team. Uh, I need you to help me make this book a success. And the way we do that is we coordinate our work. We coordinate what we do. And the best way for me to do that with you would be through this mailing list. And I will only mail you on that mailing list information about the book, uh, the progress on the book, things like that. But I, I won't be mailing you other stuff. So this is a very private, single source, single use email list. If you want to be a part of the launch team, please, please go sign up today. You can go to wellnessroadmapbook.com. And at the bottom of that page, you'll see uh, where you can give me uh, your name and email and I can make you a part of the launch team. Uh, a launch a launch like this can be a lot of fun working together, getting things done. Um, you'll get some special discounts on the book. You might get some uh, additional freebies and bonuses that I can throw in there. Uh, I'll be looking at what I can do and what I can't do. But this is the group that's going to help me launch the book and make it a success, and I want to do as much for you as I possibly can. So go to wellnessroadmapbook.com and, and go ahead and join that the launch team today. Thank you. Uh, so that's about all I had for this episode. So uh, until next time, I'll talk to you then. Bye. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, it's going to be a solo episode, Keto Energy, What Now? Until then, have a happy and healthy week. 